Welcome to another episode of Grow. I'm your host, Desarte Yarnway, and today we have Trent Gregorchek with me on Grow. Trent, how are you doing? Doing awesome. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. I've been looking forward to this episode with you. Um, we got a great video of you talking about why you chose to go independent. But before we jump into that, tell our audience and people that may not know you who exactly Trent is. Sure. Well, Trent uh, uh, is a financial advisor and I'm located in Traverse City, Michigan, which is the northern part of the Lower Peninsula. And I went independent four years ago. I started my RAA in, in 2016. It's called MI Capital. And so actually, I, I am really excited to be on this because I'm in growth mode. And so if you know any hacks for me, uh, I think it might be beneficial. Um, but I'm happy to share some of the things that I've um, kind of learned and used to grow to this point. So I'm really excited to be here. Let's jump into the conversation because I feel like I was in your shoes not too long ago. Um, trying to figure out the business, trying to figure out growth hacks, right? So the first question I have for you is why did you decide to go independent? So I actually have been independent for a while and that was working for other firms that were pretty corporate. And so it didn't feel so independent, at least for my position being an employee. So like my view of independence and that uh, thought was uh, I wanted to be independent uh, as far as like a business owner and financial advisor as opposed to an employee financial advisor. And so that's how I wanted to gain my independence uh, four years ago. Nice, nice. And four years, right? Four years is a pretty, it goes by fast. Like when I hit year one, I'm like, wow, where did the first year go? And then I rolled into year five pretty quickly. What have you learned in this four year time span of running your own business? Oh man. Uh, how long do we have? <laughs> you have time. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, I've learned so much like trial and error, uh, a lot about myself, a lot of about who I want to serve and how I want to service them. And I'm not done learning. And so it's, so it depends on who's like listening to this. Well, will depend on who I can relate to. Um, but I know some people go independent and start their own firm, like after building up a book of business at like Edward Jones, uh, Merrill Lynch, and then they decide to make the switch like 10 years in, 15 years in. Uh, I decided to do it with like three, four years of experience working with other people, with other firms. Um, so, so I made the switch then and it's just, it's been an ever like learning experience and it's just been really, uh, super stressful, but rewarding at the same time. And so I've learned a lot. It's hard to dial in like specific things, but I've learned a lot what doesn't work, uh, what works and then just fine tuning from there. What are some strategies that you can employ now, right? That you weren't able to employ while working, you know, with corporate independence, like as you put it earlier, right? Because I know often when you're working for somebody else, you have to go through the, the cadence of uh, compliance, right? You have to get it approved. You have to do all these things and it's a little stressful and taxing. But what are you doing now that you couldn't do before? So uh, test quickly. And, and that's the, that's, the thing that's like big to me and it's being able to test different things in a timely manner as opposed to having this idea. Like for instance, I am testing a free retirement planning course and uh, offering that to uh, people online in a digital way and that was initiated because of COVID. And so I wanted to keep growing through COVID. So I had to figure out how I wanted to reach more people online using some online marketing. And so for me to get this sort of program and course approved uh, through not just the firms that I used to work for, but if I was in like the firm like Edward Jones or Merrill Lynch or Wells Fargo, whoever it is, it would be probably almost impossible to create a course because you have to get every single thing within the course approved, even if it's totally compliant, the process, um, the, there's no way I would be able to offer this free course if I did in fact uh, work through somebody else and, and go through their compliance system because it just takes too long. It's too much work and stress and it's just not possible. So uh, that's, I'm able to do that now. I'm able to promote myself more uh, easily through like Facebook and LinkedIn. 
uh, on our website, webinars that I host uh, virtually. So, so there's many things that I do that I probably would not be doing at another firm that helped me grow just a little bit quicker. That makes sense. That makes sense. What have you learned via all these tests, right? Because for me, I tested some things early on and I saw that I didn't test long enough. So it needed more of a runway, right? More consistency for me for them to work better. So like, what are some things, some big lessons, right? Maybe two or three key lessons that you've learned from this tri trial and error. Mm -hmm. Using a, like, instead of just like sitting in bed at night, having this brilliant idea of like how to market yourself or like how to better service your clients. Like what I like to do is just use what works for other people and then copy them and then try it for myself. And then if it works great, if it doesn't, that's totally fine. But at least you're starting from this point of like, it worked for somebody else. So like the model works. And so can I make it work for me? If like growth, cause growth is different for, for depending on your situation. Uh, but if you're like a few years into your RIA and you're looking to maybe add clients and that's what you're like measuring is like growth then um, you can just test ver various things to see what works for you based on models that are proven to work for other people, right? And so, and so that's, that's kind of what I like to do uh, is, is just essentially copy other people, but like tailor it to my style, who I service, and then see if it works. But like length and longevity of, of like the campaign, call it your marketing campaign, um, I, I've actually experienced that too, where I probably gave up on things too quickly, but I really think it's important to also uh, stop doing things that aren't working in hopes that it might work eventually. So I think, and that's why I like to use like proven things as opposed to just things I make up in my head, like randomly willy nilly, uh, because then the odds of it actually working are just that much greater quick question for you for the advisor thinking about going independent watching this video right what are a few pieces of advice that you have for them yeah uh so first off don't re don't hesitate to reach out uh that advisor if you do end up upon my video because i can give you some really good tips on how to make the shift but really if i were to narrow it down to like four um if you if you um depends on what stage you're in. So like my stage was I started with no assets, no clients. And so it was very risky. Uh, the turnover rate for advisors is pretty substantial. Everybody knows that most people don't make it in the business or end up leaving just because they don't like it. Too stressful, too difficult. As far as the client attraction process is probably the most substantial reason for that. But like, if, if an advisor is out there and you have some clients and you have three to five years of experience working for a very good like mentor, other wealth advisory firm, there's no reason that you can't go independent. And as long as you know like the puzzle pieces to put together in order to run a, uh, a solid firm, uh, either in a digital way or in person, as long as you have the blueprint to doing it, there's no reason that you can't be a success because the way I look at it is if you are, if you're like an, a producer working for Edward Jones or Merrill Lynch or whoever, I keep picking on those two, but like any big wirehouse and you're putting in the work and you're attracting clients, like why not attract those clients to your business that you're an owner of? Mm -hmm. And you own, like you have equity in them, like by having them, you, that gets you equity and you own that revenue stream. Why would you create this underneath somebody else's infrastructure? Like if you're, if you're thinking about going from like an assistant, like support advisor to like producer and you're like, hmm, should I grow through the, the, the wire house or should I make the shift now? Because if I make the shift now, I'm not going to have to worry about non-competes, non-solicitations and the legal ramifications 10 years from now after I build my book at the wirehouse. So like if I was at a wirehouse and I had three to five years of really good experience and you know your stuff as a wealth manager, then I would consider making this shift before building your book because then there's no risk 
as far as you have risk on the front end, not having revenue, but there's greater risk, I think, in if you were to grow it at the wirehouse, make the shift, and then potentially lose half your clients, get a lawsuit. Um, so I, I, I would, if, if you're an advisor that is similar to like age, um, experience, I'm, I've been in the business for almost 10 years, um, then I would make the shift sooner as opposed to like growing and then making the shift. How, how difficult was the transition for you? <laughs> Not very, uh, very, because I didn't have any clients. And so the most difficult part was figuring out how I'm going to pay rent um, because I didn't have any money. Um, I didn't have any revenue uh, that was like in the hopper. I had no clients, just a couple family members. And um, so I probably chose like the most difficult way to do it, but it's, uh, it's worked and it's, it's, I'm now getting to the point like four years in where I can see like the light at the end of the tunnel and, and I can see the work and my clients are happy. And, and so, um, yeah, it's, it's been an experience. That's awesome, Trent. I wanted to take this time to transition into the growth questions. These are two fill in the blank style questions that allow our viewers to get a feel for what growth means to you. So if you're ready, I'll ask you the first one. Sure. All right. Growth to me looks like blank. Well, uh, personally to me, it looks like achieving my own personal wealth goals. So like growth is, like I said earlier, like growth is different for everybody, depending on your stage of your career and what you're trying to do. So like growth for me personally is essentially from here, uh, taking on probably uh, 20 more clients uh, currently, at, or households, I should say. Uh, currently, I only serve 38 households, which is really good. It's like tight and I like it. Um, I never want to serve like over 100 um, at any time. So attracting essentially um, the like the ideal clients, uh, 20 more of them. Um, that that's growth to me, uh, being able to spend a little bit more time, uh, like doing, um, not business stuff, but like life stuff and traveling and, and like when we have kids and spending more time with, with them, um, with my parents and going to see them in Tennessee and, and just like enjoying life. So like for me, growth means being able to do like those things uh, personally for me anyway, but like, it's different for everybody. Right. So if you, if you want to, if you want to be like a, um, you know, person who builds up this 200 advisory advisor firm and, uh, go scale that, you know, growth is different for that person. But me personally, it's more of a lifestyle business for me and, and just achieving, you know, what I want to achieve financially and, and, uh, uh, like for a lifestyle. That's a great segue into the second growth question. It says, I plan on reaching my growth goals by doing blank. Uh, yeah, so um, <laughs> I think I'm going to do a shout out. Uh, I think it's Ryan Hughes. Uh, Ryan, he, he did, he posted a Twitter question the other day and it just, it racked my brain. It's still racking my brain actually. Uh, like, what does it mean to, for a financial advisory firm, I'm, putting it together to be a success or like to know that you've been success. I think it was like something like that. Um, I think he was on your show too, but um, it's been racking my brain. Like what does it actually mean for like, whether you're a solo firm like me or multiple advisor firm, like other people, like what does it mean to be a success? And so like I plan on like reaching my goals through um, like trying to figure out what works for me in order to achieve my goals. And what I think the answer to his question is, at least in my opinion, is um, profits for clients. And then um, number one, like that's the number one thing that I'm going to reach my growth in, in lifestyle is by giving, uh, providing clients profit um, for their investments, not only just their investments, but total picture. Um, and then number two, focusing on profits for the firm. And then if I accomplish like those two things, clients first, firm second, then I think that I will achieve like my uh, growth goals that I just mentioned. 
let's double down really quickly on growth and, and profits for the firm. What does that look like? You said you have an ideal client. What does that ideal client look like? So I've actually, like you talk about testing. I've tested like so many different things. Uh, I've tried niching. I've tried keeping it more like high level, but more age specific. Uh, but really like who is attracted to my firm are like business owners and um, tech people like IT uh, uh, entrepreneurs who were in the tech field and, and exited the business and just appreciate somebody else who's I'm very like tech minded and engineer kind of way of thinking. And so like those sorts of people, engineers to uh, flock to me and that's who I mostly serve are like business owners um, that can vary in age, um, engineers, IT professionals, software entrepreneurs, um, but they just appreciate my approach and the way I think um, and the steps I take to creating plans and the way I manage assets. And, and so um, those are the types of people you know, that, that I serve and, and those will be kind of like the next 20 households that we uh, take on over the next few years. That's awesome, man. Thank you so much for joining me today on Grow. Before I let you go, what's your social media handles and contact information for anybody watching that wants to follow up with you? It, the best way to reach out if, if I'm fortunate enough to have people that want to talk to me further um, about my experience is just to go to my website, just micapital.net. Uh, and that's micapital.net. That's the best way. Um, but I'm also on Twitter. I'm also on Facebook. Uh, you can just search MI Capital and um, everything will populate uh, through Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, those sorts of channels. But uh, yeah, that's the best way. Thanks again, Trent, for joining us here on Grow. And thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the conversation, feel free to visit us at www.grow.altruist.com and follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter to be a part of the conversation. Again, I'm Desarte Yarnway, your host, and we'll see you next time here on Grow. Mm -hmm.